Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our 2020 electric power survey. We will get started in a minute. Good morning to all. My name is Sebastian Perez Ferreiro and I'm the managing editor of BN Americas. I'd like to welcome everybody to this webinar in which we will discuss the results of BN Americas 2020 electric power survey. We understand that this is a very difficult time for everyone. We hope that you are all in good health and taken care. We would also like to extend a big thank you to all those listening today who took the time to participate in the survey. Our content director, Cesar Iliano, will begin the webinar with a presentation of the highlights of our survey, which was done later than usual this year amid the uncertain scenario. We will then hold a discussion with Fernando Branger, Energy Project Senior Executive at Development Bank CAF, and Eddie Carlos Martin Santos, Division Director, Power Systems at Schneider Electric. I'd like to remind all participants that they are in listen-only mode. Questions can be submitted at any time using the chat function on the right side of the screen. Depending on the time, we will endeavor to answer your questions at the end of the discussion. Thank you, Sebastian. Um, as, as you mentioned, I will be uh, going through some charts, some graphics that we produced with the results of, of our survey. As you may know, we have conducted four different surveys during August this year to gather data on, on how the professionals at the infra, electric power, mining, and oil and gas industries are seeing the current situation and what they are expecting for the, for the next months of this very unusual year. Of course, um, in the electric power survey, you'll see that the COVID-19 pandemic was the main source of problems, but there are some good news. The, the answers show that the electric power professionals see the health crisis fading away. Yes, of course, there are still many unsolved issues that continue to bring uncertainty, but even though the impact was big, what the industry expects for the following months is quite better than what we have seen so far this year. Um, some information about the survey, more than 30% uh, of, of respondents have operations in the countries that make the Pacific Alliance, Chile, Peru, Colombia, and Mexico. Uh, that's a block of countries practicing a free market economy, uh, although uh, it remains to be seen what happens now in Mexico with López Obrador, who has slowed down its liberalization process and, and has changed the rules of the game, favoring the, the state-run utility CFE. Uh, another quarter of, um, of a survey uh, have operation in Brazil, a market well positioned to recover from political and economic headwinds, and another quarter came from uh, or said that had operations are, are present in Argentina. Nearly a third of the respondents are in upper management, followed by commercial executives, operation managers, engineers, and project managers. 
uh, Brasil's Association of Eólica and Argentina's Asociación de Grandes Usuarios de Energía Eléctrica help many Americas reach many of their respondents. So um, let's start with the, with the results. Um, the first thing we wanted to share with you uh, this morning is uh, the perception of uh, the harm done by COVID-19 in the electric power industry. 69% of all respondents said that their company's investment plans have been affected since the pan pandemic started. That's what everybody would expect. Um, and this, of course, can have many explanations from the distributors suffering from the fact that millions of, of house households cannot pay the, the bills or generators saying, uh, seeing how the demand dropped heavily in the first months of the pandemic or the developers deciding to freeze projects until the, the outlook was clear. But still, 20% said that the plans had not been affected. And uh, after the, the first months where nothing seemed to move, uh, what we are seeing now is that there, there are at least some big investment plans commanded by governments in the sector that will bring opportunities. For instance, the transmission line auction involving investments of, of 7.4 billion reais that will be held in December in Brazil, or the decision taken by Chile to accelerate the development of a 1.3 billion US dollar transmission line, uh, which, will be, which will be tendered within the next 14 months. Um, I also took a, took a look at what um, Ben America's database has to say about this, and uh, there are still 877 generation projects awaiting construction decision in Latin America. These are projects projects that go from a capex of $140,000 to $6 billion. So there are plenty of projects there waiting for for the the black cloud to, to pass. Um, in the same lines, this. The second graphic shows that um, more than 85% of respondents said the crisis had a big or moderate impact in their activities. Among the generation companies, however, the percentage of people saying the impact was big was greater, almost half of them. The biggest problems, of course, are having the depressed demand and, the, and some delay in payments. But um, when asked about um, what they expect from now on, the numbers in the survey are telling a different story. Almost three out of four see a moderate or small impact in their activities from the pandemic going forward. Among providers, the numbers are similar. Only 25% expect big problems ahead. They have been suffering due to delaying projects across Latin America, but now they're expecting activity to pick up. Here's the, the toughest question of a survey, saying um, we ask uh, when people or the industry professionals believe that the uh, investment um, levels will come, will go back to the to, to where they were before the pandemic. Uh, of course, when, when everybody was answering this question, they need to assess the risk of a second wave of, of a pandemic, right? Um, the survey shows that 49.5% of respondents believe that by the second half of 2021, investment will be back again in pre-coronavirus levels, while a 19% forecast it will happen in the first half of 2021. 21.7% uh, expect this to happen only in uh, 2022 or beyond. Um, as I said at the beginning, we, we've done this uh, survey for other industries too, and this result of, uh, of uh, the timing of, uh, of the investment coming back to, to normal levels um, is in line with what, what we saw in the mining survey. In that survey, 48% of mining professionals also expected investment levels to recover by the second half of 2021. Um, there are some some signs that that um, uh, give some uh, uh, support to what the, the, the these results are saying. For instance, if Chile is in some way an example of what will happen with the renewable energy industry in, in other countries in the in the years to come, we need to take a look at what happened in Chile in, in July. In July, a total of ten renewable energy projects projects entered environmental evaluation. And there are projects that make up to 242 megawatts of, of potential capacity. 
and the environmental body also granted 12 approvals in July, adding 11 uh, solar parks, photovoltaic parks, and, and one wind farm to the to the pipeline. All these new projects um, total 726 megawatts for a total investment of all, almost uh, 670 million US dollars. This amount is a landmark for recent environmental approvals, being by far the most significant uh, month in terms of investment over, over the last 12 months. So um, what I'm trying to say here is that it looks like um, Chile that uh, has been championing the renewable industry or, or the renewable investment in the last years uh, is showing some, some numbers in July that looks like everything's going back to normal. Um, the next, the previous chart plays well with this one where we show the answers to the question will we see an increase or decrease in the approval and design of new projects? In this one, 53.2% uh, expect more activity or the same as they see now. That means uh, more than half of respondents believe the sector has hit bottom at least in this specific topic. And what about the money? The, this graphic shows the, the, the industry does not expect the financing conditions to deteriorate going forward. 70.1% believes the financing conditions will improve or will stay as they are now. Uh, providers are even more optimistic as an 80% say financial conditions will improve or stay the same. Capital flows will favor renewable energy projects said one person from a generation company when completing the, the survey and, and leaving a comment. So, uh, the financing conditions may improve, but through what channels could that money land in projects? That's what we asked here. And the survey shows 33.3% expected to be through project finance. Uh, it's still the most popular structure, uh, financial structure, but that figure is well below what we saw in previous surveys. Uh, um, in, in 2019, uh, electric power survey was something like 63 or 62 percent. And the, the new thing here is that multilateral banks appear in the second position, and it is important to say that in the last year's survey, they did not even appear among the first five options. Just over a third of the generator survey survey indicated that they plan to raise that they plan to raise capital and are targeting a variety of instruments such as capital injections two-thirds of those surveyed believe that m a's and joint ventures will increase in the sector driven by the financial weakness of some players so the activity will pick up and there will be some money available um, but to what subsectors will that money go? Um, what we asked in the earlier survey was what will the best investment opportunities in the near term be? And solar energy came in first. Even though many think the costs and prices have, done, have gone down so much in the last years. Only 20% see the best opportunities will come from other sources rather than solar and wind. In the same line, 72.3% of respondents said solar will be the energy source with the biggest growth in the next five years. Natural gas and combined cycle came in third. Natural gas, abundant in Latin America, is key for the transition into a green matrix in the region. The wave of new LNG regasification projects we are seeing, especially in Brazil, offer support to this view. With this survey, we also try to get information about what trends will be changing the business model in the coming years. And the most popular answer, with a 35%, was the development of energy storage systems. It was no surprise, as every day we are reading more and more announcements on this subject. Last month, for instance, we heard Brazil giant mining Vale is installing a battery energy storage system at, it, at its Ilia Guaiba terminal, in partnership with Siemens and Micropower. Uh, with this uh, storage system, the miner expects to reduce the port's energy costs by close to 20%. So, it is clear that the next stop of the green revolution in Latin America is the development of energy storage systems. The question, of course, is how long it will take to, to get there. 
The second most popular answer in this question was the growth of uh, energy free markets. In Latin America, we are already reading every day companies from very different industries signing private long term deals with generators. generators sorry. So, the money available might land in the businesses we saw in the previous charts, but in what countries will that money land? Um, so we ask what countries offer the best the better business climate for electric power projects and uh, we saw what we expected mexico that uh, had won the first spot in america's 2019 survey fell to the fifth position in 2020. the government decision to favor cfe and to deliver renewable projects with new regulations completely changed the view of the comp of the companies of what will happen there First in the ranking was Chile, where, as we saw before, the government is speeding up environmental approval of projects while setting an ambitious agenda for decarbonization. In the second position, we can see Colombia, where the government looks to accelerate the development of solar and wind projects to balance the energy matrix. So, what can go wrong? Another question in the survey was, what's the biggest threat, threat to recovery? Despite the fear of new coronavirus outbreaks and a long economic depress depression, the majority of respondents see the region's government as the main roadblock to sector recovery. Political and legal uncertainty is the main perceived threat, with 29% of responses. The rate of those who see state regulatory, regulatory action as the main threat climbs to over 50% when adding responses that point to who are planning by governments, greater country risk or regulatory hurdles. The geographical distribution of this perception varies. 67% of respondents with operations in Mexico see the combination of political uncertainty, uh, country risk and, and poor planning as the main threat. So, um, this is the, the summary of the chart. I hope I was able to show the main conclusions of our server, survey. Um, the report, the full report will be published this week for our subscribers and a summary will be available to all of you who took the time to answer to the survey. So Thank now, um, Sebastian, we'll continue with you. Thank you, Cesar. Uh, we will now have a conversation with Fernando Branger, Energy Project Senior Executive at Development Bank CAF, and Eddie Carlos Martin Santos, Division Director of Power Systems at Schneider Electric. Audience members can write their questions on the chat function, and we will try to get to them, time permitting. Fernando, Eddie Carlos, thanks for joining us today. Um, as Cesar pointed out, it has been a wild ride in 2020 so far, and I believe that part of the uncertainty can be seen in some of the answers of our survey. But as we pointed out, there are some signs of hope so can you tell us what were your first impressions when you saw the results of the survey? Fernando, let's start with you. Sure. Good morning, everybody. Um, uh, let's, let's, let's see. Uh, when, when we see the, the whole survey, uh, I, what I can tell is that still uh, there is a, a uncertainty. You, 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 you see some of the uh, answers that basically are divided from those who have uh, uh, um, uh, optimist view and others that are not as optimist. So uh, there's the, uh, we are still in, in a very early uh, phase of the pandemic and their impact in the, uh, in the economics. So uh, there is still uncertainty in the region. Of course, it's it's not the same in any country. In every country, uh, uh, countries uh, uh, are behaving uh, uh, differently, and uh, how they're responding to uh, the impact is it's different. So, but in general, uh, I will say there's still uncertainty. The other thing is that. Uh, the renewals Re renewals are here and will stay even though there may be some projects are, are being delayed but uh the renewals are here so there's there's no question of that 
uh, when we see the the most important or where uh, the people think that uh, the, the the new technology will will increase is, is solar, for instance. Uh, I, I was uh, really impressed uh, uh, of that uh, result because uh, it's it's uh, a lot of people saying that solar is it's the one who will grow uh, more. The other one is uh, new te uh, technologies coming uh, in terms uh, basically uh, batteries uh, uh, storage, and I would say it's not only because uh, uh, you you will you will. Uh, uh, use batteries in, in your uh, ancillary uh, uh, services, but also maybe because the, uh, people are seeing the coming of the e-mobility. I mean, the, you know, uh, in Chile, for instance, you have already uh, a line, a bus line that works with batteries. So, uh, and I, I read the other day that BYD is uh, building a, a, a factory in Brazil for batteries for their buses. So. I think this is something that is coming to. It's uh, of course again, it's it's not the same for every country. But uh, uh, we were listening uh, projects not only in Chile but also in in Argentina and Brazil here in Panama. So uh, and in, in in Colombia too. So uh, countries are moving to uh, e mobility. So probably that's also an important thing to see when we are talking about starch. And uh, the last thing that I will uh, I would like to uh, recall from 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 this uh, survey is the, the mini grids. Mini grids. It seems that for some countries, it's some uh, new way of, uh, of of working in terms of uh, the new uh, format that the industry is, is taking. Of course, it's something that needs a lot of. Uh, 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 regulation modification and uh, uh, and that's something that it's not uh, 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 I would say it's homo it's it, um, the same in in, in all the regions but uh, uh, we we basically uh, we are seeing that uh, many grids are coming uh, um, and that something that I would like to see in more uh, probably uh, in the future uh, in, in different uh, uh, part of, uh, of the region. So just this to, to start, but I, I think this uh, in some way uh, uh, sum, uh, sum up the, the, what we saw in, in the survey. Thanks, uh, Fernando. Eddie Carlos, uh, can we get your uh, general view of the survey and its results? Yeah, uh, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, webinar uh, to have the opportunity to discuss about the survey. Uh, let's say that um, I am more serving this industry, this sector. Uh, so uh, as a company, we are providing some equipment, software and solutions to the, uh, to the market, to this market, the, the energy market. Um, and uh, I can say that the positive things that we uh, were able to, to see in the, in the survey was that uh, there is a continuous flow of investments for certain uh, subsectors. So it was mentioned before uh, that in Brazil and in Chile we have a continuous and a planned um, uh, program to expand the transmission uh, grid, the transmission uh, uh, network. Uh, the same for the renewable market. We see a lot of investments, a lot of uh, countries investing in renewable uh, sector, so in Chile, in Brazil. And uh, as a provider for this industry, what uh, we realized in this uh, period of the uh, that we are facing the pandemic uh, that uh, what was really uh, happening in this uh, sector was a kind of um, postponing or delays uh, more associated to the uh, let's say uh, to the need to stop 
the works or the construction in order to implement some sanitary or some healthy measures, uh, but especially in these uh, two subsectors, uh, the transmission and the renewable, we don't see a lot of uh, decisions to stop uh, the investments due to the pandemic. So we still see, especially here in Chile, uh, last week I was reviewing some uh, information about investments in renewable markets. And for my surprise, uh, I saw that the level of investments in solar and wind uh, was uh, increasing uh, in comparison to the uh, assessment that the, 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 the entity did here in Chile. Uh, the, the investments uh, were increasing for this year and for the next year. So I see that for, uh, let's say, the positive side of this are these continuous investments in certain uh, subsectors. A uh, point of attention here is the uh, distribution market, because you know that due to the pandemic, we had a lot of, uh, let's say, uh, smaller uh, companies uh, needing to stop uh, the operations needing to close or shut down uh, the the operation, and uh, you s we we can see this impact when we look at the uh, energy sold by the distribution companies. And I was reviewing this here in Chile, and uh, we realized that the regulated customers had an increase of uh, ten percent, and uh, when we go to the free uh, consumers, the big companies that uh, uh, have uh, freedom to, to, to hire or to buy uh, electricity. In fact, they had a, a, a small increase in the uh, consumption. So let's say in this, uh, uh, in this landscape, the most affected uh, subsegment, in, uh, in my point of view, was the dis distribution segment because they are suffering the impact of the uh, reduction of economic activities. Uh, but uh, again, in a, a little bit disbalanced way, because we see that the big companies still have increase in the consumption, uh, where we see the decreasing of the consumption is more in the regulated. And in the regulated market, we have the uh, residential consumers or the smaller consumers that need to buy from the uh, local uh, local uh, distribution companies. So, uh, bottom line, what I see is a certain delaying uh, investments, but not cancellations. What we see is the development of investments um, in a positive way in transmission and generation and a certain difficulty for the distribution that can impact the generation side. But at the end, we see, let's say, even with this uh, situation impacting uh, the market, we see a certain positive development, a positive, uh, let's say, we can see that for the future, if you don't have any, uh, let's say, uh, additional and strong disruption, I see that we have uh, uh, a moderate uh, impact, and uh, probably those uh, sub segments or sub sectors that are in a better shape, they will continue uh, investing uh, in the future. So, so, just one, Cesar here again, sorry. Uh, why? Can you find any reason why uh, the numbers seem to show that generators? Are more pessimistic than the rest of uh, of the companies in the in the, in the industry. Sorry, yes, sir, Carlos, just, are you there? Just to try. Ah, okay, thank you. I, I thought that the question was for the Fernando. Uh, no, I, I mean, see, there, I see there that. that, too, that Sorry, there are some numbers that show that generators seem to be a little bit more pessimistic than the rest of the uh, of the companies in the in the chain uh, industry. So I, I just was wondering if you can think of any reason why is that? Uh, I I I would say that they are uh, uh, more pessimistic uh, because uh, they are more 
uh, there are some conflicts uh, between generators and distributors. Uh, there were you mentioned in your in your uh, explosion uh, in your presentation. Uh, specifically here in Chile, we had some conflicts between generators and distributors, uh, distribution companies, because at the end the government decided to, let's say, to allow the consumers to uh, delay the, the payment of bills. And in a certain way, there was some, uh, uh, let's say, discussion and uh, unilateral decision by the distribution or some distribution companies uh, to not pay uh, the bill for the, the, the generators. So this is, uh, let's say, perceived by the generator as uh, uh, something that can be, uh, let's say, uh, become a kind of a standard. And uh, in, in fact, here in Chile, there was something associated with this, but at the end, the regulator uh, entered in the discussion and at the end, the distributor and the generator agreed uh, on a, a kind of agreement in order to avoid this uh, lack of payment. But I would say that probably is because also the generator are, are the generators are working with a, a longer uh, time frame, so they really need to have uh, uh, secured that they will be able to construct and then to sell uh, the energy that they are producing. And uh, for that here, specifically in Chile, uh, I would say that uh, this situation is more favorable because we see a lot of uh, electro-intensive companies like mining uh, companies hiring or anticipating the, the, the hiring of uh, electricity or the energy from those uh, generators since the uh, energy comes from the renewable, um, renewable sources. So despite of this uh, pessimistic, uh, let's say, humor or uh, from the generators, I would say that for the, the Chilean market, I see a lot of uh, interesting opportunities to the generators because there are this push coming from the electro-intensive customers to shift from uh, certain, let's say, uh, thermal uh, generator, gener uh, electricity to the renewable ones. So I would say that uh, bottom line, uh, there are some pessim pessimism due to these uh, uh, specific conflict that can uh, happen between the players of the market. But I see that at uh, mid long long uh, term, there is a lot of possibilities to, to to continue the flow of investments. Thanks, Eddie Carlos. Uh, Fernando, do you see uh, the second half of 2021? as the moment when the full recovery and investment uh, happens? Uh, well, I think it's, it's, uh, that will depend in, in each country. Uh, uh, some countries are already, uh, what we've seen is they're already uh, beginning to, to, to start and they're starting uh, with uh, uh, some uh, important uh, grow in, in, in their uh, main activities, but others might not, uh, uh, you know, start as, as strong as, as, as other countries. Uh, and that, that, that's the thing in, in Latin America. Uh, the, the impact in each country has been uh, different. Uh, you, you, you can see, for instance, Peru, the impact in Peru has been enormous. Uh, uh, even though that the Peru was Probably one of the the countries who had a, uh, a better macroeconomic, uh, 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 you know, uh, support uh, to 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 face this, this uh, pandemic, but uh, they've been uh, in impact very very hard. Uh, uh, other countries, for uh, Brazil, you have uh, Brazil. Uh, uh, the second or the third uh, uh, countries in the world with uh, uh, with more uh, COVID uh, uh, affected people, but uh, the economy is 
it's uh, it's it's working and then uh, uh, even though there are some areas where you see that there is a, a huge contraction uh, so probably what we see it's it's a very uh, uh, different uh, scenarios for for each country but uh, uh, at the end of uh, 220, uh, 2021, uh, uh, most countries will be uh, uh, in a, in a uh, in, you know, growing, uh, and uh, their economy is growing. Uh, the, the only thing that I, I'm aware of is that if the impact right now is so huge, that may move uh, the uh, the political um, agendas and that might affect the uh, the the growing in the future. So, uh, in terms of economics, uh, I will see that probably the twenty twenty one at the end is it's a, a good chance that everybody will be in a growing phase. But what we do not uh, what uh, we do not know is, uh, is that how this uh, impact in the political uh, arena, arena uh, will, will will work. So maybe we will see some you know pressures in, in some countries that delay the the, mm -hmm. the 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 start of the economy. Uh, how about you, Eddie Carlos? Uh, what's your outlook for full recovery of investment in the sector? I also believe uh, that we're gonna have, uh, let's say, the recovering uh, happening in mid of next year, beginning of uh, 2022. Um, uh, I agree with Fernando, it's, it is quite difficult to forecast country per country, uh, but uh, let's say uh, we have some, uh, let's say economic information saying that the countries uh, had a drop in GDP between 20 and 5%. Uh, so it's clear that this sector, the energy sector, uh, not necessarily follow, follows the, the GDP of each country. But uh, if we, again, go back to the, uh, situation of energy consumption uh, and again i will bring uh, the the case of chile uh, at first we had a, a sharp drop of 10 percent of the energy consumption here in chile what we see here is that we are at six percent uh, average uh, and uh, we if we uh, expect that in the next few months we're gonna have the recovery of the uh, economic activity probably we will reach uh, the same levels of the uh, pre-pandemic situation uh, that happened in February of this year probably in second half of next year uh, depending on each country for sure uh, and probably, if we don't have, as you uh, pointed out in your survey, uh, any specific uh, situation, any specific political or legal situation in the country, I would say that we would work with the idea of to have the recovery at the same level of February 2020 by second half of 2021 for uh, beginning of 2022. Okay, let's move on okay. to risk. Um, do you both agree with the survey that political regulatory risks are the main threat to the industry? Fernando, let's start with you. Uh, yes, uh, I'm, I'm not, and that I would say always been the case uh, for Latin America. Uh, the thing is that I, 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 as I said before, uh, with this uh, pandemic, uh, the impact may move also the, the political agenda in different countries. So, um, yeah, th uh, that, that's probably the most important thing in, in Latin America. And uh, 
uh, as uh, we will see how 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 this develops. Uh, we we are seeing how uh, Mexico already uh, they've been uh, moving or uh, uh, trying to to do something different in their uh, uh, regulatory framework, and that was before the pandemic. So uh, now with the pandemic, of course, that things uh, uh, may uh, uh, worsen. So that's always been the, the, the most important thing, I will say, in, in, in the region, the, the political and the regulatory framework. Eddie Carlos, uh, do, you, do you agree? Yeah, I, 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 I agree. Uh, I believe that uh, the investors, what they want is previsibility. So if you have a condition where uh, there is a change or there are changes in the, uh, in the framework, in the contract conditions, in, regulation that, in regulations that uh, in a certain way change, the previous conditions or the conditions that generated the investment, uh, for sure, uh, the, the investors will uh, think or double think in order to move on with the, uh, with the investment already decided. But uh, more than that, uh, if uh, the investors don't see that there is a uh, let's say good conditions, the anger for new investments uh, will be limited. So in this sense, I would agree uh, that uh, the political and legal, uh, let's say, changes can impact uh, strongly uh, the, the anger for investment. And uh, again, uh, this is something that we gonna we, we need to to evaluate country per country uh, because uh, as you mentioned before uh, Chile uh, has a, a certain uh, let's say good conditions for the investments uh, or for the investors uh, other countries that changed uh, the conditions in the last few uh, months or years you 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 mentioned about Mexico uh, so when we have this kind of uh, changes in the conditions, uh, probably we're going to have some uh, uh, blocking to move forward with the investment. Hmm. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, I just wanted to, to mention one of uh, one of the uh, points in the survey that um, one of the uh, of, uh, questions was about what uh, what will the the source with the fastest growth um, and solar appear there, and I believe that nobody would would, uh, would be able to say a different thing. But um, it also showed that um, the professionals are seeing the solar energy as the best investment opportunities. And there's where um, while we were discussing topics uh, for the, for the survey, it it appeared that with all the uh, the low the very low prices in Generally, in the industry, the equipment, uh, um, the prices that we saw in the tenders in the last two years. Do you agree that solar energy is the the best the best amount of opportunity in the sector for the for the next years? Sorry, any of you, Carlos or, or Fernando? Well, uh, that that's a good question. Uh, uh, basically, what we've seen and in in Chile, for instance, is that uh, that. Prices have been in, in some point of the day uh, negative, so uh, it's it's uh, um, it's in term of, of of return of investment. That's the question. It's it's solar really the best uh, 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 technology in term of return of investment, and I think that that will depend uh, again uh, on the on the realities of a, a, each country. Of course, when you bring some solar farm to, let's say, Colombia, probably they will uh, uh, they will get a, 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 a very good return on investment. But when but when you have a a, a very competitive uh, market, uh, that's the thing uh, that might might change. So that's that's a, a very interesting question, and uh, uh, and uh, I. Think that 
uh, also um, brings uh, uh, to the regulators uh, questions about how, and I think this is happening right now in Chile, is that how we will pay the energy in the future. Since, uh, uh, you know, at some point we have this so low uh, prices. So, uh, uh, and of course, if, if the successful of solar can be also it's it's uh, it's the worst enemy in terms of uh, you know if if so cheap the energy uh, uh, brought by by the uh, solar then uh, won't be solar anymore <laughs> and that's uh, mm -hmm. the, the contradiction so uh, yes uh, this is something that uh, I think that that we will see uh, um, uh, more discussions. Uh, in the future, but there's a plenty of space in the region uh, to to bring solar uh, in in every other country. Thanks, Eddie hey, Carlos. Yeah, it's a very interesting uh, question, uh, and uh, I would like I would like to put in context. Uh, uh, I was discussing these uh, some some days ago. Uh, about the differences between solar and wind, I would say that in, in terms of a quantity of new plants, for sure, the solar ones will be bigger. And it's clear that we have seen a reduction in the prices, in the prices of the energy, the equipment, and so on. So it's a very competitive market. But at the same time, uh, we're going to have more uh, facilities, more plants, because I would say that in solar, we have a kind of, uh, um, we have, a, a, it's a sub-segment less intensive in capital. If you compare with uh, wind or hydro, uh, so in this sense, we can say that uh, yes, it's a, a big uh, chunk of the market because we're gonna have more opportunities of investment. Uh, but again, uh, it will be very competitive for the providers, for the uh, people generating energy there, and so on. So I would say that I agree with the uh, survey saying that would be one of the um, most important uh, growth avenues. Uh, but uh, again, we need to put in context about the uh, level of investment, uh, how intensive is the uh, is the the, 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 the type of uh, uh, generation uh, and another point that I would bring to this to the discussion is about regulation uh, here in Chile we see that probably I am not uh, a total expert and uh, I'm living out of Brazil for more than five years uh, so uh, maybe I don't have the few full picture of the situation in Brazil but uh, I would say that we have more uh, solar plants and more uh, utility scale, meaning big solar plants in Chile. Uh, and there are some regulation here, uh, not for the utility scale, but uh, also for the micro and uh, let's say mid size uh, solar plants. Uh, there is a regulation securing, uh, let's say, um, a stable price if an investor decides. Uh, to, 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 to put money in these uh, uh, mid-size or, or, or micro uh, generation using solar. So we are uh, again talking about uh, let's say legal or, or regulation that favor uh, the investment um, and uh, we need to see again if uh, we have this equally in other countries in order to favor uh, the growth of this uh, type of generation. So again, I believe that in terms of quantity, in terms of uh, uh, diffusion of the, these uh, type of generation, I see that there are 
a lot of uh, opportunities. What we, we, we need to evaluate is, uh, as mentioned before, um, the level of prices, the level of competitiveness, uh, the level of compet uh, comp the, the quantity of players taking part of this uh, market for sure will be big. Uh, we need to evaluate the level of profitability. Okay, yeah, yeah, right. Um, there's, there's a question from the audience that um, it was again uh, one of the topics that we were discussing when we were uh, doing the, the survey is that, um, I mean, it, uh, the, the, the people who answer the survey uh, tend to agree that the energy storage will be the, the next big thing in the, in the industry. But um, the question here is, when uh, do you feel it will be main, mainstream in Latin America? Because uh, uh, there are no like uh, time frames that uh, there are no agreement on the time frame. Some people believe it's it's coming, it's it's uh, going on right now, and some believe it it will not happen in the next I know three or four years. I know what's your view on that. Uh, I would say that there are three forces in 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 in, in bringing uh, storage to Latin America. One is, of course, costs. Uh, still, a, a battery is uh, technology. Uh, uh, I will say, in in its infancy, uh, and uh, we are uh, more uh, uh, cheaper right now than they were uh, probably five years ago. But it's still there is still a, a technology that uh, uh, needs to, to work on their costs. Second, it's uh, uh, regula uh, regulations. How uh, storage is it's handled uh, in each, in each uh, regulation, it's, uh, it's very important how, how you are going to pay for that uh, uh, asset. So that's very important. And the third one, it's something that uh, it's related with the question that the survey uh, 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 rose is about solar. If you bring more solar and more uh, intermittent uh, uh, energy to the to the grid, uh, you will need, of course, uh, 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 batteries. So, so those three forces for me are the uh, the forces that that will push. Uh, bringing batteries uh, uh, for the region. Some countries, as, as, as I said before, are more uh, uh, advanced in this. Uh, some others um, probably uh, at the very beginning, but that's something that is will be part of the uh, uh, you know part of the grid. Uh, once you you bring solar and 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 wind, uh, you will bring uh, batteries. Carlos, do you see the same? Yeah, I, I totally agree with Fernando. The, uh, in fact, uh, I believe that solutions, uh, let's say, technologically uh, speaking, we already have certain storage systems. Uh, so the technology is already there. Uh, maybe limited uh, to some applications because when we go to utility scale, it's a little bit more complex because we are still in the limit of the, uh, let's say, development of reliable uh, solutions. Uh, and then we go to the uh, problem, the second problem uh, <laughs> about cost. So probably in small scale, we already have the solution, but uh, probably in terms of cost uh, and in terms of uh, size of the system to be implemented, we still have some uh, uh, development to, 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 to do. Uh, and uh, for sure, uh, this is the link uh, that is missing because we know that when we have solar wind, uh, we have certain instability in the in the network, or because we need to store the energy uh, for the time that we are not producing. And uh, till today, we still have uh, these uh, technological uh, path or technological development to implement uh, 
uh, in order to reach in a affordable cost uh, uh, at a, a affordable, let's say, affordable cost plus safety of the installation. So it's de de desirable. Uh, we, we wish to have these uh, storage systems, but uh, look, looking at the time frame, I wouldn't say that we, ha we will have uh, something, uh, let's say, very reliable, very popular, very uh, being applied for all the solar or other sources installations in the next, uh, I don't know, two, five years. Uh, I believe that we still have room for improvements in terms of technology and in terms of cost. Very interesting, Edi Carlos. Well, we want to thank uh, Edi Carlos, Martin Santos, and Fernando Branker for participating in today's discussion. This concludes our presentation of the BN America's 2020 Electric Power Sector Survey. We thank you for listening in. Have a great day and take care. Clients change, businesses change. The world is transforming faster than ever, and the opportunities are there, waiting for us. Over 20 years of digital innovation have turned us into the leading business intelligence provider in Latin America. BN Americas has a database with thousands of industrial projects, company profiles, key contacts, news, reports, and data, all in one easy-to-use platform. Every day, more than 50 on-the-ground journalists and experts analyze the region's major industries. Explore projects that feature opportunities for your business. Find the companies participating in those projects and connect with their decision makers. Make the best business decisions with all the facts and insights you need about the industries that are driving the Latin American economy. Get timely reports with the latest news about projects, regulations, and investments. Stay on top of the business trends. Find out what the risks and opportunities are for your business by reading the reports and analysis of our on-the-ground experts throughout Latin America. Redefine your business strategy and choose the path to success. BN Americas. Connecting opportunities.